This is the cemetery right across from the estate sale house. O M G. what's going on it's Dominic the primetime treasure hunter thanks for coming by to check out another video in just a few moments I'm gonna show you a few items that sold in my eBay store for over $300 today which reminds me it's 6 p.m. on a Friday night I just got back from my regular full-time job at the hospital and just finished filming uh, my video uh, which was the top 10 most expensive and most profitable items that sold in my eBay store for the month of September 2019 so if you did didn't get a chance to check that out and you're looking to increase your average sale price and find some new items to source check out that video because the lowest price item sold for hundred and twenty five dollars and just went up from there so uh, it is gonna be a crazy weekend uh, I've got my father-in-law in town uh, from New Jersey so uh, it's gonna be busy we're gonna be going back and forth to basketball tournaments and marching band competitions and going out to eat and just all sorts of stuff so it's just gonna be very very busy a lot of multitasking and just uh, you know just kind of a hectic schedule so I'm gonna just try to show you things that have sold over the weekend and if I get a chance to go out and source I'm gonna try to show you how how I would fit that in. I'm not sure if I even will be able to, but I'm going to see and we'll just take the video from there. So uh, without further ado, let's go into some of the items that sold today. Now, some of you saw recently, I showed you in uh, my shed, Primetime Treasure Shed Quarters, the lot of salt and pepper shakers that I purchased. There are exactly a hundred salt and pepper shakers that I purchased for $90. So I have less than a buck uh, into them. My goal is to sell each one of those shakers for $20 or more. So, so far, so far I have sold one of them for $20. That was some sharks that went out to uh, Jesse shops. If she is watching this, uh, last night I sold one that was shaped like a television, a vintage fifties television for 25 bucks. And today, uh, Mendy from the Facebook group, uh, bought these as a present. So thank you very much, Mendy. These are from the state of Indiana. Really cool vintage salt and pepper shakers, right? Right there all of them are, are vintage and uh, just check out my eBay store the link is down below you're gonna see me putting up more and more of these uh, each week so if you're interested you go by and uh, pick them up I have some up uh, right now but uh, I'm just gonna keep putting some up so there's a $20 sale right there and uh, I want to thank another viewer uh, Cody Cody man thank you so much for purchasing this item which I showed in my prior video when I was just trying to explain what the Elder Scrolls is for another item that I picked up uh, and I just happen to have this sitting around because I had this myself that I used. Uh, so this is not something I went out and sourced, but I had no use for it anymore. And Mrs. Primetime has been wanting me to just get rid of this and just list it and keeps giving it to me. So uh, Cody saw it in the video and he said, hey, how much is that Oblivion book? And I said, well, you know, it's in like new condition. I put it up for him for just $9.99 and, uh, you know, he purchased it. So there's a $10 sale right there going out to you, uh, Cody. I'm not really making anything of it because I probably bought it for around 10 bucks on eBay back in the day but uh just get my money back on it and happy to pass it on to you my man so uh, i'm glad that you're uh they're gonna get to enjoy that item it's a cool buck and it's in great shape uh then uh, in terms of a uh, comic book sale that was really good is this one right here this single comic book which i have nothing into anymore from the collection you see me talk about these older x-men books this is x-men 107 i told you if you could find x-men's uh in the low 100s to earlier than that definitely pick them up they are gonna sell well especially if they're in decent shape this one here is in uh you know in really nice condition it's a uh, you know, it's a high grade book here uh, in terms of condition and the important thing here is it has the star jammers in it they are very popular the star jammers so you can see uh, some of them here on the cover this book alone sold for ninety dollars today that was what i had it up for person just paid for it so there you go ninety dollar comic book sale right there so uh, another thing that i have to show you and these kind of crack me up I have a bunch of these, by the way. Now, uh, reminds me with the Joker movie coming out right now, which is uh, bound to be, I think, pretty popular. Uh, I'm selling some uh, Batman-related items uh, right here. So uh, you can see here, 
that these are prints, okay, so they're not original pieces of art, but they are they are signed by, and this is an original signature, all by John Hebert. Now, John Hebert is an artist, uh, and he this one, the signature's on the bottom, so this is a really cool Joker one, and I'm, I'm convinced that the Joker movie coming out is why this one's sold. I have multiple copies of some of these, and these have sold before, but again, two Batman-related item ones on the same day, I don't think that's a coincidence. I have a few more of these that are going to be going up this week. Weekend. I don't put them up in multiple listings. I put them up one at a time just to uh, isolate the marketplace on it and not flood it with the items. Don, the auction professor, uses that same strategy as well. So it's a good way to just keep the value of your items. But uh, so if anyone's interested, I have other prints up from other characters uh, from Marvel. I have uh, Hulk. I have all different ones up. Uh, Thor, if you're interested, go check it out and you'll see them listed there. I even have other ones I haven't put up. So if you're interested in a certain character, let me know. I sell these for a flat rate. I don't mess around with these in terms of uh, negotiations or anything like that because I'm giving it for a very fair price. So these are $14.99 a piece for these. That's it. It cost me about $5 to ship them, so I wound up making about 10 bucks a piece on these. These things display awesome in a frame. They look great in a man cave, look great hanging in the garage or wherever you want to put them. I got the I got about 100 of these different prints for free. The person who originally got them owned the store and passed them on to a different person who wound up getting them. Um, the person who, who wound up getting these got them for a signature of a buck a piece. So he paid the guy a buck a piece to just come by and sign 100 of them. I wound up getting them as a throw-in as part of a deal because the person who sold them to me didn't think that they were going to sell it all. So uh, these, I don't know, 15 bucks a piece for, uh, you know, for a hundred items, uh, you know, $10 a profit per uh, item. That's, you know, that's a good deal at the end of the day. I've said this before, but you can't beat free. So uh, these go in uh, 11 by 17 bags and boards. So just like with the comic books, how I've said comic books come with bags and boards. They have bags and boards also made by BCW for these 11 by 17 inch prints. And then I've shown you before, I've gone to Costco and I get those big slip sheets and uh, big sheets of cardboard that go in between the pallets. I just cut them out to size and um, I just wrap them around with a big 24 by 24 inch poly bag. It's another way those 24 by 24 inches help me out. Those I have links to, by the way, Amazon affiliate links down in the description section. If you're interested in picking those up, they will save you a ton of money because instead of having to put these in a box, which would make it go over a pound, those 24 by 24 inch bags make me uh, uh, make it allowable that I could send these first class. So uh, that's uh, how I how I wound up doing that. Make sure you write do not bend on both sides of them. I shipped a ton of them out. I've never had one bent. You got to make sure you're using nice, strong cardboard when you pick them up at Costco, BJ's Wholesale, Sam's Club, wherever you pick those up. You got to be careful because when you go back by the bailers, they have ones pieces of cardboard that are really flimsy. You have to be careful about that. If they could easily naturally bend, do not get that kind of cardboard. You have to get the kind that gives resistance. Those are the ones you want to ship the, the books in. Now, uh, last item I'm going to show you right here, which was uh, another great sale for the day, is this here. This comes from the Star Wars haul. Now, you're going to see if you go, or maybe you've watched it already, the, the what's sold on eBay video for last month, you'll see that I sold Darth Vader's TIE Fighter for $175. In that one, the light worked, but not the sound. Same thing here, light works, but not the sound. This is the regular Imperial uh, TIE Fighter. This one sold for $150. I just had it up for a couple days. Uh, it had got to about eight watches or so and then just sold uh, for the asking price of 150 bucks. So it's another great sale. And by the way, I should mention, you see how these, you know, how the pieces here are loose in here. Do not, sh do not just go and wrap this up, pop it in a box and that's it and ship it like this. You need to wrap the pieces up inside with bubble wrap and then put void fill inside so that they don't shake around and get damaged. So the stickers don't rip anything like that. Uh, trust me, it's well worth a little bit of extra time to put in to make sure you wrap those pieces. And it winds up being three pieces, two, well, actually five pieces. There's the center part, there's the two wings, and there's the pieces that attach the wings to the main part. So you've got that. Um, so I don't know, maybe there'll be more sales. Like I said, I've got to go to that practice tonight, and maybe there'll be some more sales uh, that come up. The good thing about these 
is, um, actually, this is my last one of this Batman one. So I have no more of this left. I have a few more of, of this left. The good thing is that I have the structure in place for the listing, so I could just hit sell similar. All I do is take a few new photos because the signature is in different places and sometimes in different color ink, and I can get them up really quickly. So, uh, you know, just make sure you use that sell similar feature. Now, I want to give you an update on something and also ask for your help if uh, you have some uh, assistance you could offer me on this because I'm at the point where I'm just not sure what to do. So you remember this guy, Mr. Six. I picked him up at the VFW, the local VFW, for a couple bucks. Um, you know, this could be worth like 50 bucks or so if the battery works. Now, if the battery doesn't work, and he's supposed to dance around, you just press squeeze here and he dances. Well, on the back, and I'm going to show you the slot here. I told you I was going to go out and try to find a battery for it, okay? Now, this here, I'm going to bring this up real close so you can see it. It says 3X 1.5. So that refers to, and let me open this up a little more so you could get a good view of the size of this, okay? So it's a 1.5 volt battery slot. Now, 1.5 volt batteries, batteries there's, a, there's many different types of those out there. There are some that are button types like this. And uh, this is the original one that was in there when I actually got it. Uh, this says G13A. Now, it's very difficult, I have come to find, to find a G13A battery, however, I'm questioning whether or not this is actually the real battery that's supposed to go in there. And I'll show you why in a second. I was curious about this even when I went out and bought the equivalence to this, which is the LR44, which I'll show you in a moment. But if you look at this, when I put the battery in there, you could see that the leads are not completely touching. I mean, it may look like it is to you, but trust me, they are not completely touching one another. So it makes me wonder whether or not this is the right size. Now I have N batteries and it, this is too small for an N battery slot. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly would go in here. So, and I'm not sure why it says 3X because these are the replacements right here. They're equivalent to the G13A. Uh, this is the uh, LR44, as I was just uh, mentioning. And, you know, I put this in here and it looks the same exact way right over here. If I try to put two of them in there, it's, it's too much. It kind of overstuffs it. I have a feeling that there should be a smaller cylindrical type of battery that's smaller than an N battery that would go in here. That's a 1.5 volt. And I think what happened, I'm guessing, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that someone else was messing around with this and trying to figure out what type of battery went in here and put this in here. And I don't think this is the real battery. Now I could go ahead and I could list this just as is and it will sell just purely for display purposes. And I don't mind that I bought the LR44s because I don't have any around anyway and I'm gonna come across other things. I bought them with Amazon credit. So uh, zero balance when I checked out Amazon with it. So I have like, I bought a lot of, uh, I think 10 or 12 of them. So now I'm sitting around if other things come in. But if you have any idea what type of battery would fit in this thing, let me know so we could solve this mystery together and figure out if we could get this guy working again. I, I have a feeling he may work, and I hate to list something like this and say untested or something like that and make it sound like it doesn't work when it really does. So um, I don't know. We will see. The mystery of Mr. Six, we're going to call it. And I'm going to leave this kind of hanging out there for a little bit. I don't have any pressure. I have to sell this uh, and see if anyone could help solve this mystery. So um, let me know. I'm going to go pack up some things right now and because uh, I am really on the uh, on the move here on the run and uh We'll just, I'll just turn this on as uh, things happen this weekend and we'll see, you know, uh, what kind of events transpire in terms of what we could turn into a video. Good morning, Daisy. You're the referee today. You ready to go out for your morning walk? All right, it is Saturday morning about 8.20. It's 40 degrees outside. You could definitely tell that the change of seasons is upon us. This is the game plan for the weekend. So I am headed out right now to an estate sale that starts at 9 a.m. I'm not on the list or anything. Just going to show up and, uh, you know, see where we get in there. They did have a sign-up sheet late yesterday that I just couldn't get to on a, on a Friday afternoon being at work and everything. So uh, we're going to head over there. And then the rest of the day I have... Have, uh, activities with the kids and my father-in-law's over and we've got some of that uh, going on tomorrow as well but I am going to try to get over to an estate sale uh, from my number one favorite estate sale dealer and that is tomorrow later in the morning so that's the plan really two estate sales this weekend 
to estate sales better than no estate sales and sometimes you know you just have to do that you have to just balance things out with other things going on in your life you know some days i could go out all day and do this type of stuff but other days it's uh limited to one sale so we'll try to make the most of it and see what treasures we could find at this sale coming up right now let's get over there okay so there's already some cars lined up here for the estate sale um you know this is the same exact area where i was at last week it's not the same exact street but it is the same area the house will be coming up here to the left and i will uh, show it to you right over here it is a one level so it is an older house and uh it's obscured right now by a lot of these uh trees and and brush and stuff but uh, hopefully there's some good stuff in there. We will uh, get in line and see what we can find inside. No saw blades on this one. Okay, this one is good. It's just gonna need to be taken apart from underneath. It's uh, firmly attached, but well worth it for 10. We gotta get under here and take all of these out. Right here, there's four of them. I have some wrenches with me and that's what we're gonna use to, uh, to detach this. This is why I take this blue bag with me so I could pull out one of these wrenches and uh, find the right fit to take things like this off when they come up. So we're just gonna work on this. Fortunately, these have really just required one turn with the wrench and then they just easily just come off like this. So perfect, two down, two to go. All right, okay. they're all out. Let's so, try to pull this out now. It's prime time. No comps on this one, but interesting enough subject matter and old enough that it's worth picking up and in nice shape too. So I haven't seen one on lip training before. This is very interesting. I will have to tell you about this one later, but definitely gonna pick this up for $1. I could use this for shipping out posters. It has the uh, cap on both sides, so it's perfect. It's not gonna cost anything either. And remember to always look for that sign because that is how you're gonna get the best deals at these sales for the most part.
I like to grab shipping supplies when I can find them. So anytime I get these clasp envelopes, pick them up. These two are totally worth taking out of there and just tossing them in the box. They're not gonna cost anything. They're unsharpened and they are Santa related. All right, everyone, that actually turned out to be a pretty darn good deal. Uh, I'll show you what the total price was for everything. Just tell you a couple things about what you just saw. Uh, this here is the For Better or Worse comic series. Uh, this was a strip that was often in the Sunday papers. I read them as a kid. I thought it was decent. I didn't love it. Uh, for that reason, they don't really sell that well if you find individual books. Now, there are some people who do collect these and will purchase them in big lots. And that's the only way they're really going to sell. So for example, uh, as a recent comp, someone recently sold uh, 29 of these for about $70. And that's about how many of these I wound up getting. It's like 25 or so, 26. I've got big ones and I've got uh, smaller ones here too. So the total that I paid for all of those books was uh, $8. And I'll tell you how much the overall price was in just a moment. So that wound up being a great deal because originally the advertised price for books was two bucks a piece. So to get all of those for just $8 uh, was awesome. There was the red uh, vice that you saw me uh, take off. Now that one is a three and a half inch one, which goes for about $50. Now, there is a bigger one. Unfortunately, that wasn't the one, but there was a bigger one by a company that would sell for around $200. But that's the perfect type of item, a small, heavy item like that for cubic rate shipping. So don't be deterred by that. If it's small and heavy, you could ship it out cubic rate, and that's going to cost less than $10 to ship. It was a $10 pickup price. But remember, that price is now diminished by when you get a great deal like this and then you could sell for like 70 bucks. Well, guess what? When you come around then and go to sell that vice, that $10 doesn't really matter that much. It starts to uh, really consolidate once you start picking up more and more items. Now, this one is a local item and every area where you're in, there are local items that are valuable that only you will be able to source because they're unique to your area. And in central New York, there's a little town called Skinny Atlas and every single uh, winter time, they do something called uh, Dickens and Skinny Atlas and they basically reenact uh, Charles Dickens' uh, Christmas story on the streets. And so they have horse and buggy carriages that go by in the snow and they have people dressed up in period from the town. And this is a drawing and a coloring inside of it. And it's signed by somebody. Now, it looks like that somebody wrote the name of all, I can't really get it because there's uh, too much glare here, but looks like someone wrote the name of all the characters on there. I don't know if it's the people themselves that actually uh, signed it, but then there's a signature of some kind of official person from 2001. It says Little Dickens. For a dollar, it's totally worth picking up. There's a lot of people who are gonna have nostalgia for that area who moved away, who would love to have something like this to hang in their home around Christmas. Christmas time. So for a buck, it definitely seemed like a, a no-brainer. Uh, office supplies, like I say, always pick those up when you could see them. Then some things you just go by gut, you go by instinct. Everything can't possibly be comped, but something like this, lip reading in great condition, like I said, who knows what it'll go for, but uh, you know, again, worth picking up when you're going to get a bundle deal. Uh, I wound up getting this because I knew I could just throw it in and it wasn't going to cost anything. And so I'll build up a Calvin and Hobbes lot. I've shown you these before as bolos. It's again, one of these things you don't really want to sell individually. You want to build them up in a big lot and then sell them out uh, that way. And then uh, there was the uh, sander. That was a great deal on the sander. That's mm, probably like a $40 piece right there. Maybe a little bit more for it. And same thing with the uh, Stanley, a great company. I've mentioned this before, but this is the uh, framing square. So if you find these, uh, definitely pick these up. These uh, can sell for uh, around you know, 30, 40 bucks or so. So uh, you just gotta clean it up a little bit. So here's the receipt. This is the price I paid for everything, $30. I just couldn't show it to you from the other angle because the light glare was just obscuring it. So uh, this is a great deal. As you can see here, 
Uh, a lot of things just wound up being throw-ins, like the two pencils, the lip reading book, the shipping supplies, all those sorts of things. That's what happens when you uh, take a box and start just throwing things in there. Um, they're not going to charge you for every single thing in there. It's going to be too much for them when you go to the checkout area, and they're just going to say, all right, let's just look at the bigger price items, price those, and everything else just gets, uh, just gets tossed in. So that's just uh, extra profit for you. I am so tempted right now to be bad and to go to another estate sale, but that would take me about 13 minutes away from Primetime Treasure headquarters, and I need to get back there for my son's basketball game, so I don't want to risk it. So I'm going to head in the direction of Primetime Treasure headquarters. If I see anything along the way, I'll stop off at that, but oh boy, it's tough to resist that, but I'm going to resist it this time, and I'm going to be good. All right, so we're back at Primetime Treasure Headquarters. I wanna give you a little update on Mrs. Primetime's furniture restoration project. This is the chair that I dug out of the trash heap last week, and then there's a desk that she's been working on as well. Remember I told you she was gonna combine the chair with that desk and paint it blue? You could see it a little bit behind me, but let me turn the camera around so you could see it a little bit better. So if you remember last week, that's the same brown chair that I pulled out of that trash pile, and uh, look what she did with it. It really looks nice. I love this color, and uh, she painted this as well. This looks really cool inside, so she probably has some more touch-ups to do to it, and then she is gonna get these listed on Facebook Marketplace. So speaking of items that I got last week for free out of a trash heap, this is another example that I showed in the prior haul video. I showed you later that I tested it and it worked. It's this vintage uh, instant electric heater. So I should be able to get a hundred bucks out of this, hopefully at least, and maybe even a little bit more. I wanna take some pictures right now and take advantage of the natural sunlight because it's a big item and it's just easier to lay it out here on the driveway and take the photos rather than trying to put it inside on a table or something like that. So uh, take advantage of that natural light for bigger items like this when you can. You know, and it's cool to get these things when they have the uh, service manuals inside of them or any kind of paperwork because right here, that allows me to date it. You can see right up top, July 1977. Perfect. All right, well, this is all photographed now, good to go. This is the last picture that I took just to show whoever's interested in buying this that it does have the original styrofoam inserts as well to protect it during shipping, which is obviously important and adds to consumer confidence. And just to give you an update on this piece from Mrs. Primetime, she still has it listed for 225. Someone offered her $175 on it. She was willing to go to 200, but they couldn't make a deal, but she has it actually here inside uh, the house because she loves it so much that she's actually thinking of just keeping it herself. So uh, jury's still out on uh, what she's going to do with this, but uh, right now she's uh, really enjoying having it in the house. All right, so I'm not going to waste any time with these for better or worse books because I don't want them piling up all over the place. So I'm just getting them listed uh, right now. I'm going to put a price of $99.99 on them, I think and just see what happens. I'll be willing to take offers on them and stuff, but uh, that's pretty much where I'm gonna start with uh, this many books. So I'm gonna take some photos and get it listed. Hey Daisy, what are you doing there sitting there looking all formal and everything? What are you doing? There's Daisy relaxing right there having fun. All right, next up is a hardcover Snoopy lot. So we're gonna get these Peanuts books up pretty soon as well. Are you even serious right now? So I'm very determined to get this poster listed today. Very, very determined. <laughs> so this is an item that I sold today that I have to show you on computer because the person who previously got it never paid for it. And I had packed it up not realizing that they didn't pay for it yet. And I just kept it in the packaging, relisted it, and just waited for someone else to buy it. So uh, this is a really cool Joe Namath shirt. I'm gonna zoom in on it so you could see a little bit better. Uh, this one has a horse racing theme on it. These are vintage dress shirts. Definitely be on the lookout for these. I found this a while ago hanging in a garage sale and uh, I'll show you a zoom up of the uh, print in just a second here so you could get a better a look at it, kind of the pattern. But uh, I wound up picking it up for a buck or two, 
And uh, that's the actual sale price there, $32.50. So if you ever see anything with a Joe Namath, and there you could see there's the tag on there, pick it up. It's a good be on the lookout item, and they generally sell very well. Good morning, Daisy. It is Sunday morning. Hey, don't step on that poster. I got her pretty well trained that she does not even go on the poster. So uh, she is good to go with this. I could keep her in here and uh, we are good. I'm going to get this Return of the Jedi uh, poster listed. And we are going to head out to an estate sale pretty soon. Do you agree with this measurement, Daisy? <laughs> could you just hold this side for me while we measure this poster? <laughs> All right, everyone. So we are heading out right now to the estate sale. It's about a half an hour away. There are some really interesting things at this sale. Uh, really excited. I have a partner with me today. Mrs. Primetime's dad is here from New Jersey and he's coming along to the estate sale. Now he also does not like to be on camera. He doesn't want to speak at all, but he is going to be my wingman for the day. So we'll see how this goes. We're heading out there right now. And we are in the middle of nowhere to get to this estate sale. Hey, you guys know where the estate sale is? You guys have any idea? I'm looking for an estate sale. I cannot find it. It's supposed to be somewhere around here. All right. Excuse me. Do you know where the estate sale is? I'm looking for the estate sale. I can't find it. This is something you city folk are not going to come across too much when you're driving around looking for sales. Okay, we have arrived. It is 10.43 a.m. and the cars are lined up as usual. The house should be up here on the left somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. I have not uh, come here the day before because there's too much going on yesterday, so I am not on the list. And so... Hopefully, we will still be able to get in. Here we go, right here. This is the house right here, this white one. All right, let's get in line, get parked, get in. This is the cemetery right across from the estate sale house. O-M-G. All right, so we've signed in and we're number 44 on the list. Yeah. Oh, Jack Daniels. <laughs> uh. This is a nice vintage one, J.C. Penny. This is an old straw hat. Really cool piece. It's not even marked with a price, so it's not going to cost much. Just going to throw it right in the box here. No markings on this one, but it's so distinctive that I just have to pick this up. It's got the strap and everything. Really cool piece. So, some very interesting pieces, but uh, these have all been purchased. The bottom part of the tag has been pulled off. That means it's purchased. This coffee grinder is amazing. This sold for $195. Wow. This is not marked and looks like some kind of club, but I'm not exactly sure what it is. I'm going to have to research it, but with no price on it, I'm just going to stick it in the box. This uh, could be one of these things that turns out to be valuable or not. Not sure, but it definitely is cool and definitely feels vintage. What's the next time that it finished? 
cool sign. Love bar signs, ranch signs for two bucks. Cannot miss with this. Second week in a row with this same exact model of Boston pencil sharpener screwed into the wall. Gonna pop it right off with the screwdriver. All right, that was actually a pain to get off because one of the screws was stripped, but you really need a short screwdriver to do this. A long one is not gonna get in those tight angles, but uh, it's gone. This Ouija board must be related to the cemetery to have outside. Oh my God, <laughs> my son is- um... I definitely gotta get this. I yeah. just bought a couple of them. Yeah. I bought a few of them over the years. My yeah. son was always really interested in them. Yes. Awesome. Should I buy you? Let's see what it says. Uh, yes, I should. <laughs> this is a cool item right here, this witch, but the batteries are corroded inside. So I'm going to have to take them out, put new ones in, see if it works. All right, I took the old batteries out. Put the new batteries in. <laughs> See if she works. Oh, super cool. <laughs> oh, check that out. <laughs> That's awesome. That's <laughs> why uh, so I have to take batteries with you. It's a really good example of a good lesson. A lot of people pass that up because of the battery corrosion and they don't take batteries with them. So uh, you can see I have a whole bunch of batteries in my bag. I have D batteries and I had two C's, at least carry two C's. I have more in the car for bigger things, but uh, that's a $40 piece right there, uh, max. So, but uh, definitely gonna sell, definitely worth picking up. Always pick these up, these drawing books, these oversized ones. I have these same two uh, back home. But uh, I am also just going to pick them up just to make other lots out of them. <laughs> Can you imagine this house like when it's dark and stuff with the Ouija board and the cemetery across the street? Oh my gosh. Not much over here, but uh, hey look, it's uh, the shutter doors that I picked up for Mrs. Primetime. This one's already sold, 65 bucks on this one. And this one sold for 45 Interesting. I don't know. This is another one of these things that I really have to just go by gut and instinct on, and I really like it. It looks like from behind it that it is original paint. It does have a title on the back, although I couldn't find any comps for it. It's called Waiting the Answer, and here it has an 1800 copyright, so for eight bucks in a frame, I'll definitely take a chance. There is some water staining on the back of it, uh, as you can see here, but... It doesn't look like it permeated through to the front. So, again, I'm still gonna take a chance on it. Taxidermy skunk, anybody? P-U, 65 bucks sold. Wow. This is really creepy. It's like solid wood, this thing. Got these hands that you would put into the to the ground. Alright. Get that too. This is 10 bucks. Uh -huh. My wife is gonna kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's another cool piece. It's a shaman. Uh, it's made out of wood. Very interesting, but I'm gonna pass on it for 45. So let's leave it here for next person. All right, it's time to chow down after a hard day of treasure hunting and get some dinosaur barbecue in the heart of Syracuse. Three, please raise your hand and come inside. Malone, party of three. All right, so we've got some quesadillas. Uh, Partial rack of ribs, mac and cheese, cornbread, and potatoes and gravy. All right, we're gonna play a little trick on Mrs. Primetime. <laughs> All right, 
so Mrs. Primetime said that this head definitely goes tonight. It gets listed tonight. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to get it listed tonight, but I will list it as soon as possible. This thing is huge. I mean, it's solid wood. It definitely has a vintage feel to it. I have absolutely zero idea how to comp this thing right now. So I'm gonna have to do some research into it. The wig on top looks newer that they fitted this on. I mean, you could just peel this off and put whatever you want onto it. Uh, this person was into a lot of Native American wear, so it may have that as uh, part of its heritage in some way. But I would probably try to sell it as some type of, um, you know, old, you know, old lady kind of scary hag kind of item or something like that. You know, you'd stick these in the ground. It need like another screw here or something like that. So, you know, it ultimately kind of look like this, you know, something, something along those lines. So uh, I'm not sure, you know, this here right on the bottom of, of these had a $40 price tag, probably just for the hands. So I don't know, you know, I told you I got everything for 60 bucks. I would hope to get that back just with this item. So we'll have to see uh, what happens with it. And so I'm just going to put this one to the side. I'm going to have to pick all of the all the lint out of their hair and everything like that. And it's going to require a little bit of work to, uh, you know, to get this nice and fine so that I could, uh, so that I could list it. I think I will keep this on here because it probably look even weirder, um, without the, without the hair on there. So I'm going to, I think I'm just going to keep this on here. It's actually, they glued it on here. So, uh, I don't want to totally take it off. So just touch it up a little bit. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, there were really some freaky items in there, which, uh, made sense because it was across from a cemetery. So in terms of tips, uh, you remember what I said earlier uh, about this item, make sure you're bringing batteries with you. A lot of people will pass on items that have batteries in them that are dead or look corroded, uh, because they're just going to assume that it doesn't work and they don't want to invest into it. So having those batteries could really help you. This was, uh, pretty neat, pretty neat item. So I'm happy with that one. Now, in terms of a tip on something I messed up on, either that or I'm cursed because of the type of item that this is. Uh, this is the Ouija board. Now, this comes with the pointer. Now, normally there's a little uh, plastic piece inside of here. It's missing on this, but they still sell without the plastic piece in. Uh, these could sell for over a hundred bucks, but here's the thing I wanna tell you about uh, that I made a mistake on here. So you see here how it has the tape on the outside. Now, normally for paper items that have tape on it, what I always do is I peel it off just to make sure that it doesn't take any of the paper with it. But if you, I, you, I know you can't feel, actually maybe you can, just try to stick your hand right to the screen and maybe you could feel it. No, I'm obviously just kidding, but um, maybe you could see from how I'm touching it. It doesn't really feel like it was made of a paper that could actually tear because it has kind of a smooth finish to it. Uh, but turns out, looks, look what happens when I take this off. Now, I don't think that this was actually covered up and hidden because they're not those type of dealers. But if you look what happened, this now has peeled off. And no, we cannot uh, take what's on the back of this and just stick it back on there. It's, it's just too stuck onto that. It's not going to work. So... Can I still get something out of it? Probably. Will I be able to get out of it what I would have if it didn't have this piece of paper peeled off? No. So uh, that's definitely a lesson going forward. Even if it's anything close to remotely possible that the tape could peel off you know, anything on the covering, test it out before you purchase it. So uh, that's a little lesson on that one. Another item that's a lesson item, and I just didn't have a good enough uh, light angle. Now, I still like the picture. I still think that it's cool. Um, but as you can see here, they're actually, interestingly enough, now, if you look right here, there is no um, sign of like a moisture stain like there is down here. And that's where I was focused on, because if you look down here, and then you look on the bottom, you don't see any, anything that came through here. And same thing with this one on top. So I was focused on this and uh, you could see that's right there on the corresponding side. You don't see any of it coming through really. But interesting enough, when I got back later and looked, you could see some coming through here. You see that? So we, we've definitely got some staining that has come through. So again, 
uh, that is also going to decrease the value of this. Again, does it make it totally worthless? I don't think so. I mean, I still like it. I always say, get items that you like and you wouldn't mind holding on to if you later find out that something is wrong with it. And I told you, I just went with this one based on gut and uh, I'll be happy to display this in primetime treasure shed quarters, you know, if I can't sell it and I'll just keep it there for now and work on it at a later point. I'm not sure if I should take it out of the frame and maybe try to reframe it or just sell it like this without the frame. What do you think? I mean, this has, you know, glass. It's the original frame and everything. It has some original cutouts on the back. Let me know what you think in the comments if I should... Uh, keep it like this or if I should take it out and try to uh, do something else with it. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm cursed for playing a little trick on Mrs. Primetime there because of uh, the Ouija board. Uh, didn't want to play ball with me. It's interesting. Kind of weird that these are the types of items that uh, something like that happened on. Um, this was pretty interesting. We've got these Jack Daniels cards with the poker chips. And these are definitely vintage cards. You could tell. Uh, from the back just looking at the font and looking at the uh, numbering and the you know just the design of it really cool cards uh, it doesn't have a date on them but again you could just tell that they're vintage and um, you know one of them is actually still sealed so that's good too so um, I'm not sure exactly what we'll get out of it I would hope somewhere around maybe like 50 for it uh, maybe it'll go for less than that again. Maybe uh, maybe a little more, but they're vintage chips So we'll have to see I'll do my research into it uh, Then there's the pencil sharpener uh, This one's not in as good condition as the one that I got last week, but it's still decent uh, Hopefully maybe around 30 bucks for this um, sometimes a little more sometimes a little less just depends But it's worth putting the effort in to uh, unscrew that off of the wall So in terms of the hats, I always like to pick up uh, vintage hats if I could find them. I think these are pretty cool. Straw hats usually do pretty well. There are some vintage straw hats that will sell for over a hundred dollars. I don't think any of these will, but I'll be happy for these if I could get around 40 to 50 bucks uh, per hat. The one that intrigues me the most because it doesn't have a company name on the inside of it is this one right here. It has the uh, strap on the bottom to go right under the chin. So this one looks to me, uh, I'm not an expert uh, per se, but uh, just from what I know about hats, looks like it is one that has some kind of Asian heritage to it. Could be Chinese, Japanese. I'm not sure. Um, if any of you think you know more detail about this, please let me know. I'm going to do my research and uh, try to figure it out some more. But uh, I didn't spend much on this, so it was definitely worth uh, picking this one up. Then these drawing books. I always tell you to get these drawing books if you could see them. I just amassed them in lots, and then I sell them, so there were a couple of them there. And then uh, this one here, nice old wooden vintage sign. No sniveling. Uh, pretty funny. You could see this in a man cave, in a bar, something like that, hanging in a garage. So a uh, nice piece there. Nice and light, by the way. It's got a nice cool little gouge in it. Like, that's not a problem. So... Uh, and then in terms of uh, an item that's sold, this is actually rolled up the Star Wars uh, Return of the Jedi poster that I showed you earlier. I put it up for 28 bucks, and it's sold within a couple of hours, so that's from the big giant poster lot. So if there's anything you saw today that you were interested in, please let me know in the comment section and I will make it a priority to list for you. If you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. We are right on the verge of 8,000 members and may be there by the time you watch this video. Uh, also, make sure you come to the Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, and also check me out on Instagram. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see you back at the next video. Hopefully. Take care, everybody.